more about over constraints and how you can detect Okay, it. yeah, so over constraints are in particular quite difficult to um, work out and there's a whole process that needs to be uh, followed. So let me try and give you a quick overview. So over constraints start off by having a poor setup of clocks. So as you know, hardware designs have clocks. If we are not setting them up properly in formal, then when the clock is supposed to fire, it would not fire, which means it would not sample the state of the design in the test bench. So that can cause problems. The other issue that can come from is resets. And usually in any modern day SOC, there are hundreds of clocks and, and different types of resets. And resets again can cause a problem if you're initializing flops that shouldn't be, then you have a problem. Um, if you are having too many uninitialized flops, then that can be a problem. So just not setting up these two can cause problems with constraints. So another one I can think of is parameter reduction. So you know formal guys like to work with reducing the parameter size. And if you, if you do them too small, you might actually miss a bug. So if your FIFOs are too small, you might not catch a bug. So it's going to be important that could be an over constraint. This is actually related to the problem of checking designs with multiple configurations and often CSR based setup of the configuration registers can also have a bug, which means you will end up over constraining certain configurations and not checking. The other one I can think of is the design itself can have an over constraint. For example, you set a flop, but you forget to clear it in the design. That basically means you're only checking for a limited, the design itself is only working under a limited set of behaviors. And, and if your checkers are actually not exercising their else part, then you might end up agreeing with the design and both of you would end up missing a bug potentially. So, so in more overt ways in the test bench, the bugs can come from, as you know, we write auxiliary code. Um, we can easily introduce an over constraint in that area. We can also have a problem in how we write our SVAs. Um, when you actually write a property, you can very easily uh, get an over constraint by having an antecedent that is too tight. For example, you may have too many AND terms or a consequent which has got too many OR terms. So in both cases, you can end up having a scenario that can get missed very easily. And that basically ends up being an over constraint. So remember one thing, over constraints don't just happen because you've got an assumed property written in SVA. They could manifest in all of these different ways. I suppose I've left a lot on your plate today, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant, thank you. Thank you.